Netbook News, and today I am reporting for Tweak Town. Now, how did that happen? Well, Cam and I actually hang out at some of the same bars in Taipei. So, since Intel sponsored me to come down here and, and uh, cover GDC for Netbook News, I looked at the conference and I said, you know, tablets and netbooks are a very small part of what goes on here at GDC. So I thought, hey, why not do something for you guys at Tweak Town? So if you have anything that you want me to go and grab, let me know. My Twitter is uh, at Nicole underscore Scooter. I'll put it here maybe. Um, or you can always uh, send Cam an email and he'll let me know. So contact Tweak Town and they'll let me, uh, they'll have me running around the show floor trying to find stuff for you guys. So I've been down to the show floor and while it's not built, uh, there's boxes and crates everywhere. It's uh, kind of in disarray. The lighting is terrible. I hope they, uh, that improves by the time the show opens tomorrow. So keep an eye out for me, Nicole. I'll be doing some videos for you guys at Tweak Den and I hope you enjoy them. So this is Nicole here at GDC. Hi, I'm Chris Kingsley from yeah. Rebellion. And if you could be alien or predator, who would you if be? If I could be alien or predator, ooh, I don't know, I love them both. Uh, predator, this is the best, he's got the coolest weapon. And if you could be one video game character in the history of all video games, what uh, character would that be? Oh, wow, uh, <laughs> one, oh, blimey, um, 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 God, what a question. I I'm, know. I've got <laughs> just decades of things, characters. Um, my favorite game of all time is Star Raiders, so Star Raider. I, there's no character for it, but that's okay. probably my favorite. I like that it's not a person, it's an actual machine, that's cool. And what got you into video games? What got me into video games? Um, playing video games when I was a kid, I just loved them. And I, when I was young, I played um, lots of games on my Atari VCS, on my Commodore PET. Um, I even made my own computer from bits and pieces. And then, um, in the old days, you could actually buy magazines like Analog and Bits that had uh, games listings in them, so you could type them in and then you could modify them, and that was really exciting because you could make the games, you could learn how people made games, how they structured them, and uh, that's how I got into games. And if you could give it, we are at the Game Developers Conference, any advice for the game developers out there? Uh, advice for the game developers go do it, it's great fun. <laughs> that, sound good? that sounds good. I've, I've got one last question yeah. for you though. Um, do you do any mobile gaming? Um, we haven't done any in terms of mobile gaming for... Uh, on, on, on handsets, yes. on netbooks, on um, No, we MIDs. haven't done any mobile gaming yet, but it's definitely an area. It's some really exciting areas out there for games, not just consoles, not just PC. It's really interesting to see the social games. It's a really exciting space. Hey, so my name's Kevin O'Leary. I'm a product manager for Battlefield Bad Company 2, and I got a little insider information for all you fans out there. Uh, as you're playing through the single-player mission, you're going to come across, a little bit of a spoiler alert here, uh, a mission where you're going to be shooting some enemies, where there's thunder and lightning going on, and you're going to use this to mask your enemy or your sniper fire, um, so the enemies are not alerted. Piece of the conversation actually came from our lead developer as they were trying to figure out how to, to play this scene out within the game. The developer said, "Why don't we do X?" And the producer responded with, "Damn, I wish I thought that was my idea." The actual verbatim words of that conversation are in that sequence with the thunder and lightning. There's your insider information. Take it. Buy Battlefield Bad Company 2 on PC, 360, and PS3 now. My name is Jonathan Dowdswell, and I'm with Relic Entertainment. I'm the general manager, and this is Dawn of War 2 Chaos Rising. Dawn of War 2 Chaos Rising is actually not out yet. It comes out in just a couple days, I believe, um, on the PC. We're super excited about it. The history behind it is the first standalone expansion to Dawn of War 2. I've never seen it on six screens like this. This AMD hardware is super, and the game looks just incredible. Uh, we got some of our Marines down here. And you can see how well it's showing here. 
Yeah, so Dawn of War II, Chaos Rising is the, is the extension, the story extension of the original Dawn of War II. Um, it takes place after the events of Dawn of War II in the same sub subsector, which is Aurelia. And you can take your same Marines and level them from level 20 to level 30 and uh, fight against the Chaos, which are the new race that we've added for this game. I just found out that our release date is officially March 11th. So the, the uh, development story I'll tell you about, it's not exactly a story, it's a chart that the team keeps. It's called the Fat Fingers chart. And basically, whenever somebody on the team makes a mistake, like submits you know, bad code or bad art or sends an email too soon with the wrong instructions or just generally causes a bit of havoc for a couple days, we add their name to the Fat Fingers chart, which is supposed to imply someone who's just working the keyboard but they can't quite hit the keys. <laughs>